Everything is Awesome is part of Courts and Parts, a podcast network featuring pop culture, TV, movie, and geek podcasts. Check out some of our other shows like TV Ate My Brain, Let's Chat with Revelin Friends, and Podstalgic at courtsandparts.com. Welcome to this week's edition of Everything is Awesome. I am your host, Kevin. This is the show where we sit down and talk to awesome people about awesome things. Uh, this is, it's still a strange feeling sitting down and doing this show proper because we went on such a run of doing uh, local Philadelphia podcasters and uh, doing solo casts with just me or with my live show co-host as just a regular sit-down co-host that we're starting to do normal sit-down interviews and it's still uh, kind of weird after going on vacation uh for three different vacations in three weeks, uh, not really saying, welcome to this show. Uh, It's still kind of weird doing it after getting back into it, but I'm really excited for this week's guest. Uh, I went on some sort of Twitter rants uh, within the last month about um, loving podcasts, but the one thing that I don't like is booking guests. And, um, And of course, I ended that with... Uh, that being said, if you want to be a guest, hit me up. Uh, and this week's guest uh, hit me up, and we uh, we were supposed to do this earlier in the uh, in the month, but I think I had just gotten back from one of those vacations, and I was pretty exhausted. Uh, so without further ado, uh, one of the hosts from Smugcast, please welcome to the show, BJ. BJ, thanks for doing the show. Awesome, great to be here. Uh, yeah, it's. Um, uh, now I'll let you know my uh, my audience knows and I'm sure uh, you'll pick up on it. I do zero research usually. Uh, the fact that I you know in, in our quote unquote pre interview where I said uh, BJ and Smugcast right that's the most I did for research uh, because this was more of an unconventional booking than than I normally do. Uh, so I had to at least find out the name of your show. But I also don't listen to anyone's show. Um, because I want to have like a fresh open mind when I sit down and talk to people. So, uh, hopefully, uh, I, I, I always hope that that doesn't come across as me being ignorant <laughs> to no, my actually, guest. Actually, that's very interesting. I do a show, uh, called Smugcast, um, with one of my good friends, AP. He does no research. Um, and then I pr- actually prepped a show and I booked the guest yeah. for the show. And okay. I like it that way because when I go through, and I give him the questions and he meets the guests. There's such a, it's so organic. And Oh and, yeah. Yeah. And I, that's one of the reasons I don't, uh, I get questions from fans and I'll get emails from fans and I won't let him see any of it before we start. So for that natural reaction. So I don't, I agree with everything you're saying on that part. Yeah, it is. Um, it's, you know, and as we kind of discussed before we started, like I, I've been doing this and I hate bringing this up on air because I feel like my audience is just a dead horse at this point, me beating it. Uh, but doing this for, for, for a decade now, um, I've, I've done the, the scheduled podcast so, you know, oh, okay, we got a 15 minute segment. Then we got to go to a five minute break. Uh, and I've done it where we try to have like a, a, three to four man team and, or even just having one co-host. Like it was, that was the, the, the thing I love about this show is it's just me and it's a new co-host every week. Um, and it's really the only person that I have to worry about schedule wise is myself. Usually I have to work around my guest. Usually sometimes the, you know, a lot of times, surprisingly in over 80 episodes, not many people have been like, I'm not doing your show at 10 PM. Um, uh, most people. And I think it's cause I talked to a lot of podcasters like yourself and you, you, you know, you guys get it. Like podcasters get it. Like we're going to have weird hours. My best shows, uh, my best shows. Uh, we figured out, we usually do them like record Sundays at one because of our work okay. schedules, but we've done some Friday nights and Saturday nights and they've been, our, and it's been 10, 11, midnight and it's been some of our best organic shows because we're tired and we're we almost become <laughs> off more natural and unrehearsed because we'll just just throw it all throw it out there and yeah that is the hardest part is is when you have we don't edit our show um we've only had to okay. edit one show um that's when ap we were doing a conspiracy theory 
and the guest brought um, like 120 proof whiskey as a gift for us, and I don't drink. And, <laughs> and then it got so bad, and we had just started, and he goes, he told me to shut the f up, and then I just was like, whoa. So I sat there for like 30 minutes and didn't say a word. We finally stopped, and we had to come back the next day and, and add another 45 minutes just to fill the show. That's the only time we've ever edited it. Unless somebody has said something really inappropriate, then, then yeah. you know, we bleeped it out or something like that. Yeah, I, it's funny because I come from that same school of editing where um, I polish it up, but like I don't, unless again, you, like you said, a guest requests something to be cut out, or if I just, you know, a lot of times I'll, I'll accidentally drop where I work and I'm like, well, you know, I work, I finally work in a position where I don't want to really have that be known. So let me cut that out. So it's very little editing. It's usually just polishing it up, making sure the levels are good, and then, and then I'm done. And that actually comes from me. Um, from uh, doing the show live. You know, we used to broadcast the show through stick cam, which was like, uh, if you're not familiar, the way I describe it is uh, it was the YouTube of live streaming. Like it used to be, I think we only had, it was before Twitch. It was like you had uh, uh, stick cam, you had uh, Ustream and blog TV. Yeah. Uh, YouTube wasn't even doing live streaming yet. So stick cam was a pretty popular one. And um uh, and you know, my thought process was, well, we're already, I've already broadcasted this two hour show. Um, why am I going to edit it out the us or the ums or even like some of the content that may have been, you know, inappropriate. I was like, well, it's already out there. Like there's a lot, like people, you know, viewed this already and, and it, what's the point? And that's kind of followed me through to just going back to normal podcasting where I was like, well, I mean. I don't need to cut out the uhs or ums. And, and it's funny uh, because, and I don't know, I mean, obviously you, you guys don't edit, so you're probably, you know, you f- feel like I do, but I remember like, you know, five, six years ago, everyone was that I, that I talked to that was doing a podcast was like, you need to cut all that out so that it sounds more professional and whatnot. But I feel like the game has changed uh, in, in that short amount of time where people, I guess if it's excessive, we'll cut it out. But like they leave it in because that's just how you naturally talk. Like it's abnormal for people to never say uh or um as they're ta- having a natural conversation the way that this show and it sounds like your show is kind of geared towards. Yeah. And we, um, ours is what we call not safe for work. Um, so because yeah. it started at us just hanging out in my garage and um, I had been working on something for many, many years just looking for the right person to work with and he came across. Hmm. Actually, the first person went to rehab, so um, <laughs> that kind of put a damper into that one. Yeah, and and so we we were trying to cater ourselves to be a certain way, and then we just started being ourselves, and then that's when mm-hmm. we just. And I think that, and it, you're right, and then it has changed a lot because I grew, I got hooked on it because I traveled, I traveled for almost 200 days. I was on, I was gone from home about 200 days a year, if not more, 200, Ooh. 250. Um, yeah, and, and so I was on an airplane. And you can only listen to music or so much. Mm-hmm. And so I started listening to, um, and they, I got my first iPhone from the company I work for. And then I was like, wow, what is this? Next thing you know, I'm downloading the Dan Patrick show. And mm-hmm. I loved and I loved it. And it, and it, and I know, cause that's a professional radio show. And then I got into other podcasts and then now it's like, I mean, everybody podcast is just still kind of beginning and it's been around for a long time, but now everybody has one and you can, and you can tell, even on some of the sounds, like how how much effort they put into it. Not in a negative way, but you can mm-hmm. you can see where some are some are really well. They flow really well. While other ones, you're just like, what did I just listen to? And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's because, and it, I mean, everybody has a a good. If you're famous, like everybody that's famous now, because I'm a huge wrestling mark, I am. And so, yeah. like, I listen to a lot of those, and, like, their sound doesn't sound good and other things like that. But, I mean, we listen to it because of who they are. And, mm-hmm. I, and I listen to other ones that maybe a lot of people might not know who they are, but their quality is phenomenal because they put everything they have into it. And I think that's one of the differences I do see when it comes to people that, that, that are doing podcasts now. Yeah. It, it is interesting, like, the – you know, podcasting, I would, I want to say I saw a crazy, I don't know how crazy the stat is. I saw a stat where like maybe 40% of people, I don't know what that, if it's the United States or the world or whatever, but 40% 
don't know what a podcast is, which is actually pretty good. Like considering I would say, uh, before serial, the podcast, like it was probably the opposite where only 40% of the people knew what a podcast was. Um, and serial, uh, was like, and I was, like, I obviously I've been a podcast mark for, for years. If I've been hosting for 10 years, um, I got turned on to, to podcasting from Smodcast when that started in that literally started February of 2007. I had broken my, uh, my ankle that, that month and, um, discovered it and binged it and, and, um, you know, became a fan. And at, at some point was like, I want to do this. And, um, and so I've been a fan of podcasting. Like I, I, like it's, I'm, uh, I'm not, a, I used to travel for work as well and I've never really been a music guy. So before podcasting, it was like, well, I just have to find the local radio and then, you know, Sirius kind of hit its mark when Stern jumped ship to, um, to satellite. And so I was listening to that and that was great because it's, constant station through no matter where you drive and that's kind of what podcasting has turned into for me is i don't travel nearly as much as i used to for work but it's it's i don't want to listen to music i just want to listen to people talk um and it is uh seeing like the the landscape change from like just as you know a bunch of unknowns really a bunch of indies doing podcasts to it being a star-studded uh medium now yeah and and I agree with that because I was, I, I believe it's not, I used to go when I traveled or whatever, I'd find AM station because I want to hear people, I would want to hear people talk. I didn't want to hear the morning guys, you know, 98.7 on your FM dial and then talking <laughs> yeah. about like celebrity gossip. And I'm like, no, I want to, so I would listen to, and then that's when I got into the news and, and, and obviously when, and that was one of the very first podcasts I listened to too was Kevin Smith. And, and I was just like, wow, he's just telling these stories and it's just like, it's like you're getting a book every week, yeah. part of a chapter, yeah. and then and then you could skip like a month, and that's why you see I used to skip for a while, and then that way I could just listen to them on a row, and and that's where and that's how I got hooked on it was those, and then I was like yeah. I want, I want to do this because I have the face for radio, you know, so I could hide, <laughs> yeah. behind. but now and like we have a camera in the studio, and because we put out little clips, and I keep hiding from the camera in my mind, <laughs> and. But it's it's evolved a lot, and one thing I didn't realize that comes behind it was, is you have to how much self promotion you have to do, and and oh, I yeah. I struggled with that because you know I felt like oh I'm gonna send out another tweet, I'm gonna put another yeah. post, and you know and that was hard because you know if you're not I mean I understand that you learn some things from like almost like show business that mm-hmm. like you have no experience in like like I book the guest and. There's been times we've had guests in and then what happens afterwards? I'm just like, what just happened? (laughs) Yeah, it's uh, it's something that I still especially since, you know, this is the first show where I have to book a guest on a weekly basis. Uh, It's it's something that I'm still after doing this show for about a year and a half or so not used to. And uh, and. I I've never been good at like the marketing game when it comes to podcasting. It's funny because I feel like this the 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 story we're painting right now, the picture that we're we're portraying is that podcasting is a horrible thing to get into, and it's not. Like I love I I'm of the mindset like everyone should try to do a podcast at least once. Like just yeah. sit down and record. It's not because like, what, like it's like Rogan said about comedy. Yeah. In the same way, anything I look about podcasting is is well, I, we everybody's welcome into it. Like everybody should do it. It's because yeah. you never know. It's like every time we're about to record, like even before I was coming on this show, I was so amped up. Like I, I've never even met you. I we barely know yeah. each other, but we're gonna see her talk, have a great interview. It's it's I don't know. It's one yeah. of the most. I had so many things taken away from me, but now I have this. Mm-hmm. It's the most fulfilling thing to do. Yeah. Oh, uh, I, and I I agree. It's it's you know I stepped away. You know it's kind of a cheat when I say I've been in it for ten years because I did like not. I stopped cold, like cold turkey when my son was born. Uh, and stopped podcasting for about two, two and a half years, uh, before finally, like he was old enough to see all my junk in my shed, which was also my, what I was like kind of turning into my studio at the time. And, uh, he's like, and he wanted to sit down and play with the stuff. And we recorded a couple little, like five minute podcasts of just me and my son. I was like, Oh man, I gotta get back into this. This is just great. And I, you know, so I started doing it again. Um, and it is like, it's, um, it's weird when like, 
going back and you know years ago to like just listening to people say like oh well this thing changed my life or this thing saved my life and it's i never had that experience really until podcasting and really until even even all the years that i've been in to podcasting um i would say like i kind of i think in the back of my mind realized it was there uh and kind of like being a crutch of, of, of sorts because i think many creative types are usually have some sort of depression uh and i, I i'm a low level like i don't even need medication for it. i need I, my medications i need to laugh and that's what podcasting was and i didn't really put that together until like i realized that like you know the people that i that are actually depressed like and and need medication around me i was like wow this is all i i I just laugh it off and that's how I, that's how I get better. And it's like podcasting is kind of saving me. And let's say like my uncle was, uh, you know, di- he was diagnosed with cancer about a year and a half ago. Uh, and about a year ago is when it, he, it came, like he went into remission and it came back about a year ago. Uh, and then, you know, November will be the year anniversary of his death. And like, that was like August of, of 2016 to really, I mean, it, it still continues to this day. Like, it's just, a, it was a struggle to like do anything and like having the Kevin Smith podcast, having, um, the, I listened to a campaign podcast from the one shot podcast network and, um, listening to a couple of the local boys here in Philly that, that I know, and they make me laugh and whatnot, like listening to all that stuff, uh, was a great way for like to forget about the shitty, like the shitty things happening for an hour. Oh and, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, and, I, I played sports a lot and mm-hmm. I'm 37. Okay. And by the way, my parents called a broadcast on a podcast, and I bought an <laughs> iPad so they can automatically download it. Still can't get it, but yeah. Um, <laughs> and and I get that all the time. I'll get a I'll get it, someone uh, one of my friends or something will send me a message She's like, "Hey, I heard you're doing a broadcast. It's pretty funny." I'm like, "It's a podcast." Well, what's a podcast? <laughs> I'll be down. I'll be down to the town here in a couple of days or a week or so, and I'll walk you through it. <laughs> and that's the biggest thing is I think a lot of people don't even know how to get to it, and I yeah, and I really don't, but. I digress, but I had broken my foot, had shoulder surgery, wrist surgery, so I can no longer play sports at all. And I needed something to like fulfill it and get away because I, I still work like 70 hours a week for my normal job. And, yeah, yeah. And so, and then when, but when you're in there and you put the headphones on, and we built this real cool studio in there because AP is a mad scientist in that studio, and you put the <laughs> headphones on, you're done. And you're just, and I yeah. like, I just, I met. This um, this uh, her name is Cynthia Smith. She actually plays for Legends Football League um, in Los Angeles, but she's from in the area. I met her through Twitter. She came in the studio and she was supposed to come on tonight. Some things happened, but she still's like, "Hey, I know um, I can't make it over, but would you like to stop by here and um, and hang out for a little bit?" And I was just like, "I met her through podcasting. Now she's like one of my bros." That's awesome. Yeah, that's um, and that's what's interesting. Like um, from my end of it is uh, I, when I first started or had the idea for this show, which was probably a year or two before I even started doing it. I was like, I'm just going to do like a show that's about podcasting. Like it's just me talking to other podcasters. And at that time, like my experience with the podcasting community was very limited despite being in it for so long. It was Reddit. Like I was like, oh, I guess Reddit is like you know, the place to go to and, and promote podcasts. And like, they're just, they, they're, they're so negative over there. Uh, and, and so I changed, like changed the, the whole theme of the show to be like, well, I'll just talk to anybody. Like, it doesn't matter who I'll talk to. Uh, and that way I'm not limiting myself to my 10 friends that do podcasts. And then I, cause, <laughs> cause, cause then I'd be done. Like I wouldn't have anyone else to talk to. And, uh, and it couldn't be further from the truth. Cause like here in Philly, we have like a, I feel like one of like a strong market of podcasters. I found a group online uh, that were all super supportive and you find other groups through Twitter and Facebook uh, and all super, like it's the complete opposite of what Reddit was like Reddit. You go and you, people would say, I have this idea for a podcast. I'm going to sit around with my friend and talk. And to me, I'm like, yes, that's genius. Yeah. Like that's yes. Everyone does it, but I find that interesting. Everyone else on Reddit wants to shit on it. <laughs> And, and, and that, and the funny part is and when you talk about podcasting, I've had, I had my brother on and, um, he did it with us and then he'll text me constantly like, Hey bro, what can I come on again? And then I've had, and then when Cynthia, she's like, Hey, I'm down to do a show when you need me to. And it's just, yeah. it's very addicting because it's something that 
before you would never be able to do if you had a home video camera you know you like record yourself and stuff mm-hmm. like that but when they walk in there it, it's it's a it's addicting because it's challenging and it's so much fun and if you get on a certain topic and it's just I mean, I think our longest one was three hours, and then we just, uh-huh. and it was just, and we didn't realize it, and yeah, that's when yeah. you know, you're having a lot of fun, and it's, yeah. and it's so inexpensive almost to do now, and and before because you're thinking, the first time I, I was in a radio station when I was 18, uh, my buddy worked there. We went in after hours when we were supposed to, and we started recording stuff, and I was hooked at 18. I was like, this is what I want to do, yeah. but yeah. I didn't want to go through in the actual radio way because I'm like. Like I don't want to play music. I want to sit here and be like, mm-hmm. hey, I want to talk to this person. Why are you interested? Let's have a good time. But that market wasn't there in like 1998, 99. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like a very similar setup. Like I, you know, even though I kind of cite Kevin Smith as the guy who, who kicked me into wanting to do podcasting, the love of, of just, uh, as, uh, not to be confused with what, what this is when people call it broadcasting, but the love of broadcasting. I remember I was 16, um, probably around, uh, the, that 98, 99 time, I guess makes sense. Yeah. Um, we'll go with that. And, uh, the local radio station uh, at the time was um, uh, a rock YSP uh, 94.1 YSP and they were um, I, I, and I, it's funny because it almost this story has now turned into a point where like I don't know if I'm making it up but it feels like it was very real <laughs> uh, but they like announced that they were looking for uh, new DJs and me and my buddy who were like in 10th grade or 11th grade at the time were like this, like, let's do it. Like, we, like let's make a tape and send it in. Um, and it, like, it, we never did cause we were, you know, we were lazy, lazy teenagers, but like that idea kind of stuck with me. And when, um, again, almost a similar thing to you is I used to wrestle like WWE style wrestling. Uh, and I had broken my ankle in February of 2007, um, not from wrestling, from drinking, uh, <laughs> it was, uh, which is, you know, it's, it, I would walk around after I, in my cast and like people that hadn't seen me in a couple months, like, Oh, I knew wrestling was finally going to get you those crazy things you do in the ring. I'm like, no, I just was walking down the street, slipped on some ice and broke my ankle drinking. <laughs> um, but like, I, I couldn't wrestle at that point And I never like I, I never fully got back into it even when it healed so like the, that summer of 2007 while I was like basically I guess I was probably just finishing up physical therapy or something or I don't know but it, it got to a point where I was like all right well I'll I'll podcast like you know it's it was a thing that seemed pretty feasible back then uh which it's insane that I'm literally doing this with one microphone and a computer because it was uh, the setup that my producer had was like 16 computers to get everything that we wanted to do oh, wow. proper. Yeah. It's, it's uh, well, cause, and, and going back to um, I've brought this story up a few times, but um, the first episode I ever recorded, I was actually in Maine traveling for work. So for me, I was in front of a computer. I think I was using uh, those crappy $20 headphone microphones that you would get from Circuit City or whatever. And uh, G-Chat, I think, was like one of the only um, like voice things that you could use for free. Like I don't, Skype, I think, was just starting up. Um, I know we didn't use it, and I like... There, I couldn't think of anything else that was around back then. And so for me, I was basically using the setup I'm using now. But my producer had me on a computer, like had a computer set up for me, had a computer set up for my co-host, had a computer set up for a guest uh, to call in, had a computer set up for our intros and our breaks and our sounders and whatnot, and a computer set up to record everything. So like, it's insane that that can all be done now, literally with one computer. Um, you can, re- like, it's... Uh, it's neat kind of seeing how we had to struggle 10 years ago. And as you said earlier, like now, literally, if you have a smartphone, you can probably record a podcast, edit that podcast and post that podcast all on that device. Well, how, well, how I started before I got started with EP was I actually bought an app. It's called Boss Jock. It was $16 at the time in 2011 or 2000. I'm sorry, 13. So imagine that okay. $16 app, right? And that's yeah, where you yeah. could actually um, talk, in, talk into your phone. or I sound, That sounds weird. But you could record on your phone, and um, you could run a splitter with different – and that's how I start. I used to record 
myself talking for hours and hours while I was driving and I was out of state and, and stuff like that. And I was like, wow, I, I was like, I have to find somebody to, to do this with me, um, to bounce back and off forth with me. But that, yeah. that's how I, that's how I got started with that one. And I would, and I would show people cause I was very self-conscious at first because I had my nose shattered at as, ch- as a child and I don't like my voice. And oh, because okay. like you're saying is what you said earlier about most people that like creative people, they're real neurotic and I'm mm-hmm. real neurotic. Uh, mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. like someone asked me the other day, "Do you listen to your show?" It's like, yeah, I do for the other parts. I will do it to, to try to get better, but most of the time, I'm like, ah, ugh. And, <laughs> yeah. And then I'm like, oh, that joke didn't work, or this bit didn't work. And um, but on aspect, like we we started out with a folding table, like a snowball. Then we started out with uh, this mic, yeah. and now uh, AP, like I said, is he's a, like he changed my life, and and that's and that's something that he do he won't ever want me to say, but. Now we have five mics. Um, we built a custom table. Um, oh, that's nice. We have AKG headphones, AKG mics, all kinds of. And then we have a mixer. And then some of the, some of the stuff he has, I'm like, what is that? And he's like, we need it. I'm like, all right, bro. And then <laughs> we have a red velvet curtain up there. We take pictures with guests. And somebody, oh, that's super cool. somebody came in and said, wow, this is better than a radio station. Some of them I've been in. I was like, that to me. They that way they know because some people think this is a hobby and and it's a passion mm-hmm. of mine. It's not a hot. Yeah, a hobby is yeah. like I go play nine holes of golf and then eat a bratwurst and come home and complain because I can't <laughs> move the next day. But like, yeah, yeah. And then my even my wife. I've been married sixteen years and she and I was laying in bed with her earlier and I was talking to her about it and she's like, no, I know it's a passion. She's like, she's like, you have a future in this and and it's phenomenal and and that's why I recommend doing it because. How it all started was I was laying in bed with my wife. I know that sounds weird, but anyways, and I was watching this comedian. <laughs> I was like, I'm funnier than he is. But she goes, what are you doing with it, though? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, damn. Yeah. And I was like, that's, yeah. That's that's like the genius thing that you hear. Like, I, I mean, and, and going back to Kevin Smith, I'm sure you've heard. Like, yeah, that's exactly kind of how he sells to people like why you should start a podcast like you, you know there's someone in this audience that says i'm funnier than funnier than that fat guy up there i can you know then prove it go out there and do the podcast and that's um you know i agree with that like I, I not that i ever said i'm better than somebody i just i i have that same passion where i just you know i started out for the wrong reasons like oh i'm gonna find a way to be rich and famous off of podcasting and because i guess 10 years ago it was maybe an idea that could happen uh but now like in the current day climate it's all about like well i'm cr- uh, creatively fulfilled and i and and i'm you know this passion that i have to sit around and talk is is being fulfilled and, and it's rare now that i you know uh with that mindset, with a passionate mindset that I get like, uh, that I, I get tired of it or I get bored of it. Like every now and then I'll be like, I just need a week off. And that's why I record more than one episode a week so that I have the ability to do that. But, um, yeah, I, I think passion drives us a long way. Uh, and, um, I'm gonna let you go back. Cause I can, t- I completely cut you off from your story. No, no, you no, you're thing. fine. But the weird part is, um, it also allowed us to be bring on our outer nerd. Because oh yeah, and um, because I've had people talking on. Speaking of wrestling, I actually worked for Ohio Valley for a while. Uh, oh, that's awesome! I was their DJ. <laughs> oh, that's amazing! So, and I'm actually from Seymour, Indiana, home of Rip Rogers. Okay. Uh, okay. If he's if you uh, know him, he's kind of become uh, he's done a lot of the podcast now, but he was Ohio Valley's head trainer. Uh, okay. So he, okay. When, the the name's starting to click a little bit more now. He's the one that, um, if you've ever heard of a podcast, like it's you, he's done Jim Cornette's and some other ones, but um, he's almost come in fashion now. He did even did Stone Cold Steve Austin's podcast, but I grew up mm-hmm. with him, and for the longest time, people used to mock him or whatever. He's a wrestler, and then and he helped train like uh, Cena, Orton, Batista that class when they were down there. Okay. Oh wow, and, that's a good class. Yeah, and then he is—he's um, an old school. He was, and if you ever hear his story of how he trained, it was great. But I, when I used to come to Indianapolis, I had a friend who was an ex-professional wrestler that trained me at one of my jobs. He's like, "Hey, can you work the the music?" I'm like, "Yeah, I used to DJ all the time." And then you would see these wrestlers, and um, I remember seeing Bobby Lashley for the first time. If, you, if he's still relevant now, I was like, "That dude yeah. is huge." 
But I got to meet like yeah. Cena, um, all those guys before they got called up, or if they got hurt, they came back down to Ohio Valley. I got to see all these guys, and even then, um, watching Dan work the mic and just you know instill and control the crowd. And the same way when you do a podcast, you you know you're controlling you're controlling your audience mm-hmm. and stuff. I just always love that, and I love the theatrics of you know the wrestling, the writing, and creative, and also, and then the other aspect was like we talked about Kevin Smith a bunch. He had a huge influence on my life, huge. Mm-hmm. For, yeah, for a lot of time, most people didn't understand some of his movies, and I just like that's the whole point. Like that's not for everyone, but it's very mm-hmm. smart humor. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree, and it's um. It is uh, the one thing that I that you know I, I every now and then I'll talk to uh, improv comedians and it's because that's something that that calls to me and, and I never really knew why and it's and, it, and what it is it's because um, that that's a talent that you need to use for wrestling for podcasting for um, you know not that I'm a big tabletop RPG player but like I you know when I do play like that's that's part like you're improving that's everything that I have ever really done has been some form of improv and um it's a skill set that like you can like it just it 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 goes across the board i think like you know whether it's you know wrestling like you need to be able to think on your feet like you do on a podcast like it's that those skill sets that you and i was um not a a uh, a great wrestler by any stretch of the imagination obviously because i'm not well known but like i i did well in my little local scene here and um it was um, a skill set that was like, people were like, why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. Like, why are, and like, I, like I recently reconnected to, with one of my buddies that we, that helps, you know, we started in the backyard and I started like him and I started it up and with a couple other people. And then uh, we eventually in the state of Pennsylvania, it's like crazy what you need to do to like promote a show to like legally put on a show. Um, but we were able to like somehow a bunch of like, like 10 to 15, 20 year olds were able to, to figure it out, get something to legally run in our, in our city. And we just started recently talking again. Again, and he sent me some clips of some of the stuff that we did when we went pro and I was like and specifically of a match that I remember being crappy and like it's like oh my god like it's it's like I I, I, I just, all I did was get whacked with the trash can lid but like it's amazing <laughs> what like that like it's actually good like I like it's, it's a five second clip that I got sent but like oh, that's a good spot it's a good bump and like but all that stuff that I did and maybe not that specifically because I don't think I uh, what I do now uh, really involves getting hit but like the working the microphone working the crowd like you said is all stuff that is I think in anything that you really do that has any kind of um, creative energy to it, you know, music, acting, uh, theater work or whatever, like that's, you're working a crowd and, and it's a skill set that you, you know, I, I think I found the common link was being improv, but like for me, it was wrestling. Like that's where I learned everything that I needed to, to do to be kind of a successful podcaster. I did my first match when Ohio Valley came to our hometown. I was still in high school and I wrote, I scripted the whole match out and I thought it was going to be like, it would take forever, you know? Mm-hmm. And like, we're like, we're almost through it in like five minutes. We had 15 minutes. So, <laughs> and then, um, I got hit with a street sign. Right. And I said, Hey, make sure it looks good. You know, sounds good. Well, he hit me full fledged into a concussion. <laughs> and afterwards, it's... yeah, afterwards I'm trying to talk to Dan Severn to get his autograph and I can't remember his name. <laughs> it's yeah. I, I, um, I, watching back some of the, cause I pulled out my DVDs of course, once I saw those clips and like, um, it's a, I I, I remember starting in the backyard and always thinking like we always were really responsible. I think the most irresponsible thing we did, uh, because the effect was cool was, was smashing, um, fluorescent light bulbs over each other's heads. I've been to those shows. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, it was incredibly dangerous, but probably, you know, and I say this as I'm remembering one, one of the guys with in here, his match set a table on fire in the backyard. Uh, that was incredibly dangerous as well. I would not recommend that to anyone listening to this thinking they want to start backyard wrestling. We used to, we used uh, to drive to those shows and give stuff. Like we once had a Nintendo to give to the, give to the wrestlers to use. Don't ask us why, but we brought a Nintendo. 
<laughs> that's uh that's we we used to use um like trays from arby's and mcdonald's and those are still um, stiff as hell well, I'll tell you, so it's it's interesting because I became an expert at those trays because I I somehow like got into the hardcore aspects uh, as we transitioned from backyard to uh, to to pro. I somehow gravi- gravitated towards hardcore wrestling, and the Arby's trays are actually now I don't know how they are now, but circa two thousand six two thousand seven, they broke. Like they shattered as you smash someone in the head with them, and it looked vicious, oh, wow. but it did not hurt at all. Um, the McDonald's trays must have been made with a higher quality plastic because they did not shatter easily, and they hurt a whole heck of a lot when when uh, they did not break. Um, but yeah, I mean that kind of uh, just looking at all that stuff. Uh, I was watching a match that. I ended up being thrown. I, I think I was supposed to just cut promos that day. So I didn't bring any of my gear with me. Um, and like, I could have ran and got it because every, all the wrestling I was ever part of was just literally within five minutes, maybe 10 minutes of my house. Uh, I never really ventured outside of my comfort zone when it came to wrestling. But one of the guys got, um, that was supposed to wrestle our hardcore champion got into a fight with one of the bookers and like took his ball and went home. So like, Hey Kev, we need you to go in there and, and do your thing. And I'm like, and the guy who was the hardcore champion, like I helped and it's weird to say train him, but like I helped train him, I guess when we were still in the backyard and the first thing he did was power bomb. And, and I, don't, I don't know if you've ever backyard yeah. wrestled, but like typically, so, you know, it starts off on the ground. <laughs> it's, it's, it's usually ground based. We wrestled on a tarp. Uh, I didn't come from the trampoline world. Like a lot of smarter backyard wrestlers do. We eventually built our own ring and it was a lot nicer than, than hitting the, the hard, hard ground. But that's where I started was on the ground and we trained this guy and we're like, Hey, you know, just let you know, like, I know, you know, it's fake, but like wrestling's fake. Like just, you know, when you power bomb me, pick me up for a power bomb and, you know, don't slam me into the ground. Just make it look like you're slamming me into the ground. And 30 seconds later, I was folded in half an indent of the, of my body in the ground. And I could not breathe because he really power bombed me. And I, I just had to go sit oh. in the car and like steam it off. I'm like, Oh my fucking God, I can't believe that this guy is going to be here. He doesn't understand like what wrestling is. Uh, and then fast forward to, I think that like, it took years for me to get into the ring with him for, for, for this. And I was like, all right, uh, before the match, I was like, Marty, it's been, it's been a while since the last time I let you do anything with me. Just don't be stiff. Like, just remember, like, I am a human being. Please don't hurt me. And <laughs> the third thing he does to me is I'm just like, I'm selling a, a like a headshot or something uh, out on the outside of the ring. And he gets a rack of chairs from somewhere and sh- legitimately shoves them into my head, uh, <laughs> knocking me to the ground. Uh, and that was where I forgot the match. So when I rewatched it recently, it was pretty amazing watching it because I forgot everything about it. But that was my, con- I think I've, I think I've only ever had one concussion concussion and it was from i don't know if it was that spot or i i the, about i don't know six moves after that was a uh again i let him power bomb me for some reason on the outside of the ring i was supposed to hit a roadblock my head hit the gym floor oh. and uh I, that was probably the source of the concussion but and i guess i should say it wasn't diagnosed as a concussion i just assumed it was because I, uh, I, I literally saw stars. It was the first time I ever really took a, a pretty bad whack to the Yeah, head. you see that flash, and you're like, what just happened? And then, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, since we're on this real time, I'll tell the story real fast. Do you know who Mark Henry is, the world's strongest man? Yes. He yes. was in Ohio Valley because he, was, po- he had, was not developed, and he was supposed to lose weight. So, I was doing a match with one of my friends, TJ. Southern Indiana, we cut everybody's name off, by the way. And... So, okay. and Mark Henry, Henry, this, this guy walked up to me and maybe it was his handler or whatever. He was like, during your match, I know you guys are local. Mark's going to interfere. I was like, Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Whatever you need. And Mark Henry walks up to me and I'm scared to death. <laughs> he says, Hey, if I F and hit you, you go down. You understand me? I'm like, uh, whatever you need. And the other guy beside me said, screw that. He's like, I don't want him hitting me. Cause he in an, um, and I was like, I was like, please, please, 
please, that's fine. You can hit me. And then they walked away about five minutes later. Motor came over. He's like, hey, we can't allow you to do it. I was like, I signed the waiver. I was like, I want, I said, this is going to be on tape. I want him to nail me. They would not yeah, allow him yeah. to do it. And I was so mad because, but when he said, when I hit you, you go down. I was like, well, what do you want me to do? And I know what he was, I didn't know yeah. about no sell. I was not smart. I mean, no one's, I mean, but he's yeah. like, I thought he thought I'd try to no sell. Like I'm going to no sell this dude that can throw me through like 25 feet. Yeah, yeah. No, it it is. Um, I, I mean, I don't know. I, going back and like talking back and forth with my buddy today, and and watching some of the other stuff, or just skimming through it, it's like I remember it being like, especially early on, it was so much fun. And then I, I like in my memory, it's like, man, it's just like it turned to shit at some point. But like talking about it today and and rewatching some of the stuff, I was like, man, that's all good stuff. Like, I can't believe it was like, like I, I thought we were shitty wrestlers, but like, I actually learned, like, I don't know, I, I assume you know Reckless yes. Youth, yeah. Tom Carter. So, uh, I don't know, well, I mean, I, I say I should say no of, I don't know if you actually no, I know, know him, yeah. but yeah, he uh, he's the guy that trained me. Like, I trained under him. Oh, wow. Uh, and, and, yeah, and, and, uh, you know, I'll, Say this, I love Reckless. I I still talk to him every now and then, uh, and whatnot. But like, man, his training style, I I never really grasped like, like w- how he trained. I guess psycho uh, psychologically, because I know, like, I know for a fact, at, you know, I think there was a class of like maybe five to eight of us that were being trained by him at the same time. And like, they were all just my FTW guys, me and all my buddies that I've been wrestling with for years at this point. And, um, this one guy, I knew for a fact he was just, he was shitty. He just, he was the shits. Like he did, he was not a good wrestler and like, that's fine. Like, I'm not like, I'm, I'm not great either. Like I'm, I, I, but I can hold my own. I can make myself look good or I can make someone else look good. And, uh, reckless would always like talk this guy up and like talk me down. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? Like, I, I know I'm not this bad. Like why? And I never really got a clear answer uh, as to why, uh, even though I still talk, like, you know, like I said, I talked to reckless once in a blue moon still now. Um, and, and I'll tell you like it, that his, from what I remember from his training, which I did not, like I ended up in the process of training and that's when I got like my first real job as an adult. Uh, and it just was too much time away. Like I was traveling four or five days a week and then to come home and have to devote a day or two to training. I was just like, I just, I can't do it anymore. Like it's, I, I'm not going to go on. I, I've, I've wrestled in front of a live paying crowd. That's my dream. That was my dream. I never said I wanted to be in the WWE. I said, I wanted to do that and I've done it. So like, I can, I can perform at this level and be happy. Um, but yeah, like it, that is, it's, it's always nuts to me, uh, to sit down and say, Oh yeah. Reckless youth trained me because like he was a big deal in the, I think that I guess the late nineties, early two thousands of, uh, of independent wrestling. Yeah. I mean, he was, he was also associated with D'Lo Brown. Yeah. Yeah. They, and they, I believe, if I remember correctly, both grew up in Jersey, South nope. Jersey, maybe, um, as backyard nope. wrestlers. Like that's like that's another thing that blows my mind is like we weren't the only backyard wrestlers that that wanted that eventually turned. I mean, it's uh, my fiance hates when I say pro because like what's pro if it's you know is it WWE or is it just doing it because you're getting paid? Uh, but like for me, I turned pro. Like I always say that I turned pro because I was getting paid to a degree. I mean, it was, I, I helped run the company. So the money wasn't really coming into my pocket. It was going back into the company, but <clears throat> like it was, it was weird. Like knowing that that's where reckless came from. It, and that, and it's even weird is like, you, we're both strangers and we or didn't know each other to do a podcast. And we found out we have like 30 things in common. It's, it's, yes. it's, it is weird. <laughs> and that's, that's, and that's like to, come back to it's like that's the beauty of the podcast there's been time i did a, uh i had someone on uh owns a brewery or whatever and um or uh, and i was talking to him i was like yeah i know a couple people from where, I, where i'm from they own breweries he's like i named him he's like yeah i know him i'm like are you kidding me like and it's just and it's, it's funny how things can really tie together like that and i've been the coolest part is being a lot of interesting people and because before a lot of people like would not talk about like you know they grew up loving wrestling and and or grew up loving uh this or that and now that's what podcasts allow you 
to do. And you said it touched on earlier. I was able, I've been able to meet some other people through podcasts and I've done a couple other people's podcasts. And like now, like I have a group text with one of them and we go back and forth. We're both in oh, indie yeah. like you do out there. And we, what about this? Well, what if we try this? And, and you know, and that's because we also do, Aaron's also, um, AP's also a, a videographer and also a photographer. So, so, okay, so that's okay. the other aspect we've been able to do is do, we've, we've done, we've done one skit that I wrote and then he, uh, and then he was in it. And that's the other part is cause you could really tie your whole branding together if you want to. And, and that's where that, that's the, that you're not limited on what you can do. No, I mean, like you're, yeah, no, yeah, especially with a computer and you can do whatever you want to do now. And it's not yeah. that as difficult as it used to be. Yeah, especially in 2017, like you, the, the world for podcasting, uh, the the world of audio and video kind of now blend together, and it's it which is great because that's like that's where I started podcasting first, and even though I was a Kevin Smith fan, like the idea of making a movie seemed way unrealistic uh, until I want to say like 2009 ish. I was ooh, I, uh, was I 27 at that point? No, I guess I was 2007, maybe 25. I don't know. Math is not something I want to do at 11 o'clock at night. Uh, but I was like in my, I, I was in my mid to late twenties. Uh, I think it was like 2009, 2010 ish. Uh, when I was like, I think I want to, I think I want to make a movie at some point in my life. And like, we've done a few skits here and there with our, with our brand. Um, not this, not the podcast brand, but our, the, the other brand that we have. And like, it is a, it's really just a world that like, if you want to do visual stuff, uh, you know, I, 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 it almost seems like it makes more sense to start a podcast, gain your following there and then expand into other things Absolutely. because it is out of everything you can do. Podcasting is, definitely the cheapest i mean it can get expensive but it's definitely the cheapest thing you can do out of the out of a lot of the other creative outlets you have and then yeah you just expand you you, you already are going online with your voice you can easily translate that to an actual video or a film or whatever i had a a lot of support from people around me to, to to take some of the neurotic like crazy things in my head and like, Hey, just write them down and then see if you can film them and talk about them. And then, yeah. and yeah. it has been well, it's been, <laughs> because you find out there's a lot more messed up people mentally in your, in, around you than you realize. <laughs> Cause we have, um, one of the fun things we like to do on the show is read emails, the complaint emails we get. Um, and it's always about a <laughs> wife and a husband that she catches a husband listening to it. And one of our favorite ones is the husband was listening to it on the way to church. And I was like, what are you doing to listen to our show on the way to church? Well, maybe that's why you're going to church. And, and I think especially the way things are now, like we have to just laugh at everything. Like we can't. I mean, yeah. right now people are taking themselves way too seriously. I just joined Facebook in January 2017. I have no problem saying that, right? Because oh, wow. I held out. And the only reason I did it was for the show, you know? And I, yeah. I regret I've been on Twitter for a very long time. Instagram, very, very long time. Um, I'm on Snapchat to watch my kids, make sure. And But <laughs> Facebook is awful. Like, I like I yeah. cried first time. Like, <laughs> I, I, I read these people things, and I'm like, I want to hug you. Something's wrong with you. <laughs> well, it is. Um, like, I have... Facebook for me uh, has really turned into more of a like, I that's where I, I rarely post anything that's not like pictures of my kids or pictures of a kid, like just some something picture oriented. That's like just so that, like my family and friends can see Absolutely. what's going on. Really, uh, Twitter, um, and, and like, I, I have Instagram, but I don't use it the way I should. Twitter is like where I go to like just like drop crazy little nuggets of information that's in my head um, that I, that I just, I want to spit out right then and there and whatnot. Um, and I, I, I mean, which is ironic is like, I really kind of just learned the whole Twitter game within the last like year, year and a half. Um, but like going, especially in the last, uh, I, I don't know, probably about year, year and a half, two years, like once the, the stuff for this past election kind of started getting gearing up. And even obviously with all the controversy that, 
we still kind of have from that and from our president and president elect or whoever you, I, I don't, I hate getting into politics. So I'm trying to keep it as neutral as possible, but like, it's still like my Facebook's way divided on it. And it like, I just have to roll my eyes all the time. It's like, it's this, what we really want to have Facebook be about. And like people are ending, like I literally read people's feeds and it's like, people are ending friendships because of their feelings on whether they feel this way or that way to to either the situation that's happening in the country or to the president's reaction to it and it's just crazy to me that that's that facebook's that powerful that it can they end just up need to have like the gene wilder gift that says good day sir i just like constantly <laughs> post it everywhere um well i i was and i was late to the game and, and a lot of the people i know didn't use twitter and they're like well why do you use twitter i'm like all right what story just broke and they're like blah 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 i'm like so okay so if you go to this It'll give you five different articles that are talking about this. That way you have five different confirmations of the story. And they're like, and because someone told me the story and I'm like, no, that like, that's not true. That's a fake story. So that way, um, and I'm like, this gives you five different um, people who wrote this article on it. So you'll actually get more truth. They're like, oh, so you should just believe one source. I'm like, no, bro, you can't believe one source. <laughs> yeah. It's one it's, and I used to have like I, I, my notifications turned on for, for my Twitter account. And I eventually turned it off cause I was just tired of my oh, phone yeah. blowing up. But like, uh, the, the year that, um, Robin Williams passed, like that's how I found out because my phone like blew up with a Twitter breaking news alert. And like, that's how I, for a while was getting my news was literally, I would just wait for my phone to go off and Twitter would tell me what, what, what's happening in the world. Uh, and that's how I found about how, about Robin Williams. I'm sure I found out some other crazy stuff that way. That's just the one that sticks out in my mind. Uh, and yeah, you're right. I mean, like I will, I mean, I probably, I guess, uh, scroll enough through both faces. Facebook and and Twitter to find similar news feeds uh, or, or articles or whatever. But yeah, I mean, Twitter is the place for me. Uh, I'm I, I'm 33 now, so that I, 33 it's like my safe space. It's like I'm comfortable with 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 Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, uh, but Twitter is like feels the most natural to me. Uh, and like my kids, thank God, are only uh, my son's five, my daughter's three. Uh, I have like it, it, I would say within the last year or two is when like Pete, when Snapchat kind of turned into like a. a popular form of social media i was like i'm finally i'm finally at that age where things start to scare me with technology like i can't i don't understand it i don't want to understand it just keep it away from me yeah another thing is every time like if something gets big then like facebook or someone else will buy them and it's like the, now when i go to yeah. instagram and i'm like hey i'm gonna post this picture of this guest it's like do you want to send it to this 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 app and i'm like i cannot handle 16 different apps like because if you spell one word wrong, one word wrong, you don't spell check it, or if you don't proofread it, I'm notorious for that. And then I have to go through and delete like yeah. 16 <laughs> posts. Yeah, I uh, like I said, that's it's it's one of the reasons why I'm so bad at at marketing is that like it's just like I do I post everything like the same thing everywhere or do I do different things on each thing? And it's it literally, it's turned into where I, I just am a poor marketer. Like I'm sure I would have way more success if I posted about my show more than once, uh, when, when it happens. Uh, and it's like, I started doing it. Like I have a little database with all my pre-written status updates. That I can just throw into hoot suite, uh, hoot suite or whatever it is. Uh, it's, it, it is literally social media as fun as it can be is for me the worst when it comes to like I could I could do it well, and that's why and that's where uh, <laughs> if, AP if had his own own business before with the photography and and that's why I say he's a mad scientist because like he was showing me like watch this hashtag he changed some hashtags on Instagram and all of a sudden how many different views we get and he'll post this and this and like and he's just that's why I call him a mad scientist at times because I'm like like I'll put like funny hashtags to me like good brother like a wrestling term or something and i know that's not what i'm supposed <laughs> to be doing and i don't do it you know to, to not the right way but it, it was it's hard for me because i'm like uh, like because you don't i if only open up my instagram the public for the show for the podcast because that helps grows it it and then the other cool part about it is all of a sudden getting followers from other people that are podcasters and they're like hey like, yeah. hey, and then we'll watch one of our clips. Like, hey, that was funny. And that, to me, and I was like, you were talking about, like, Reddit earlier. I was like, that's that's cool. If you don't, and, and we had somebody, um, 
uh, come on, and then we and they were talking about, and, and, and she said it best. She was like, if someone really is ragging on you, just ask them what the name of their effing podcast is. You know? <laughs> yeah. And and that's one thing that's always that's... stuck by us was like, if you if you like it and your core audience likes it, then just run with it. You're not not everybody's going to like your stuff. They're not. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I'm even to the point where, and I've blatantly said this on, you know, on certain shows is like, you know, I, I, at this point I, I do it for me. Like, it's not like I, I'm happy. I, I don't track my numbers as hardcore as I used to. Uh, I can say that I'm, I'm happy with the fact that it's rare that I have a month that's down from the month before. It's usually always ticking up. Uh, but it's for me, that's like the least important thing. Like I don't, um, I, as long as I'm having fun is the way I kind of look at it. And like, that was like one of the first big things for the, that, that we did was we started doing our live performances with our podcast, starting with the Philadelphia podcast festival in 2016. Um, so like, that was like, as soon as I did that, I was like, Oh my God, it's, you know, I did a live podcast, uh, like in 2007 before people did live podcasts. And like, I forgot how, uh, awesome it was to do and and I was, after the Philadelphia podcast fest I was like all right well, we're gonna do six a year that's how we're gonna that's how we're gonna offer a, you know a different take on the show and, and change it up and like we're really right now we're working on like a way to even offer something else like I want to do a Christmas special which makes no sense in the world of podcasting I want to do a musical which makes no sense in the world of podcasting but it's like all these weird little things that I'm like well what am I gonna do to like just keep myself in it and like that that's like that's a most genius idea like that most is something downloaded episode uh, at the, sure. but at the, yeah. the only bit of advice is it was my it was for me it was for my birthday we did a roast watch okay. the ufc fights so at the end i got the roast people right and people yeah, were yeah. afraid to laugh because the people were in the room we were making fun of so they didn't understand like it's okay and uh, ap yeah. is just and i went back and listened to it he was dying laughing other people were like because uh, 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 uh. i made because I, uh, I made a couple of jokes and um and you know it's it, it said something like one of my buddies who's kind of he's kind of a bigger dude i was like he reminds me of chris farley except without the except without the talent and like and i thought I was like well that's a great joke and then they're like no yeah, and they're yeah. like they were <laughs> they would laugh and i'm like oh <laughs> And then there's a video of me doing it, and I, I have the mic, and I'm holding it up like I'm doing it, you know, and I'm, like, really into it because, like, wow, I'm, like, how the hell am I ever going to be doing a roast? Whoever thought I'd be doing this two years ago or whatever? And now I'm and, – and, yeah. uh, but, yeah, it was – the roast is phenomenal. Um, we had – what we did was it was pretty cool is we were watching UFC, so people had something to do downstairs, and then we would come down, take a break, bring more people up, up and down. They would tell stories, make fun of me, and we'd go back and forth, and – it was probably the most fun I had in such a long time in my life. And cause all my friends were there. My brother was there. My close friends were there. Yeah. My wife came in there. She actually roasted me too. And it was just <laughs> like, and that was like, this is what it's about. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's like I said, for me, it's, 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 it's you know, just kind of finding, like I said, fun, new fun ways, and that's uh, I'm gonna little I'm gonna mark the roast in the back of my brain because that's a genius idea that I know like that you know it's it's a thing that exists already. But like, what other, how many podcasts have? And I'm sure there's more than than you guys. Um, but like, it's not it's a rare thing that happens in the world of podcasting. It's not like there's not that I know of. Maybe there is a, a, a roasting podcast out there, but. You know, it's it's typically it's it's a, a unique thing at the very least, and like that's where, like you know, I, I we're working on something now to kind of do something like that's super out there um, that I'm waiting for confirmation on by the end of the week that I don't think that we're gonna get at this rate, but like it's yeah, just like I, I I'll talk to the guy who is my co-host for the live shows. I'm like, hey man, like. You know the Star Wars holiday special? He's like, yeah, I mean, I've never watched it, but yeah, I'm like, well, what if we, like, we did something like that for the podcast as a live show? He's like, I don't, what? I'm like, yeah, that's the reaction I want. Like, I think, like, I think because of that reaction, I think it's going to be funny to do. <laughs> like, I mean, at the very least to me, it's going to be funny to do something crazy. Like, a, like, you know, kind of take the, the, you know, our, the live version of the show is, 
is uh, usually just me and my buddy sitting around and uh, doing like a late night television show. So like he's the, the Annie Richter to my Conan. We'll bring out a guest. We'll play some games. We'll, we'll bring out a musician or a comedy and then we're done. And like, we've done that six or seven times now over the last year. And it's like, well, how do we, I was like, I want to, I want to find new fun ways to like do things live. So like, are we really restricted to just late night stuff? Like, can't like, why not kind of put on a one hour skit that's live <laughs> about a dopey Christmas special that no one loved, but people love now. Like it's people love it because it's so bad. Like what if we did something like yeah, that? And that and that's, that'd be <laughs> like, awesome. And that's, and that's the fun part about it. Cause it's yours. Like you don't have an actual producer yeah. saying, or, or, or someone behind you or big, or, you know, like uh, executives or whatever saying, I don't know if that'll be a good idea. And you're like, eh, I can do what I want. Cause it's my show. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and like, get, like first of all, I get that it's not a good idea, but I, it's still a fun. Like for me, like I, I know for a fact that like we're gonna do it, and everyone's gonna say, "What are you doing?" And uh, and it's funny because you mentioned earlier, like you 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 had a like a good support system to kind of like encourage you to like write and like film and 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 whatnot. Um, and it's, it's, I, I kind of live in a similar life that Kevin Smith lived in where I, I'm surrounded by a lot of people that are like, why do you want to do this? Like, why do you want to wrestle? Like, why, why did you go up to New York to act in this thing? Like, why did you, why are you doing this and that? And like, like, it, and it, and it's, I, it's probably one of the reasons why it's held me back for so long from actually, you know, writing something substantial and filming it. Uh, because like, it's just in the back of my head, it's like, well, why, like, why would I like it, someone else has already done it, blah, 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 blah. And it's that like mentality that I need to break. I need to like, uh, you know, I think Kevin Smith has gone, this is who I'm stealing it from. But like that, why not mentality is the, what is what needs to be adapted because, you know, and that's what like anyone that's out there that wants to start a podcast and like, well, you know, why would I want to do that? But blah, blah, blah. don't think like, why not is the question. Like, but who is it going to hurt to do any of this? bull crap that we do uh, in the limited amount of time that we're on. Yeah. This I mean, and th- th- that's absolutely right. And the other way I look at it is, is I have two sons. They're four. Well, my son's ver- turned 14 today. Good Lord. And yeah. Oh God. Uh, the other one's 12 <laughs> and like, I have a legacy, you know, they've been on the show. Like the, they, they, um, they yeah. can go back through and see the videos and they can see the audio. And then like, they can know who their dad was because I do work a lot. I work like 60, yeah. 70 hours a week. And, um, uh, and so I didn't get to spend a lot of time with those guys. So I've always, my son's always tried to bring them into it. And, and cause I love awkwardness. That's what I love. I love making things awkward as possible. <laughs> like, um, yes. I like, you know, and then my, my youngest son's like that. And, and we bought, uh, this one of the stores out here had these, they're like 1999 and they're like painted hats and or not. They're like, um, big helmet. I don't know why you explain it anyways. So you put them on your head. It looks like a dog. Right. And so, okay. and so we were filming for, uh, we always put out a, a little thing saying, Hey, on this week's show, blah, blah, blah. And I wore it the whole time while AP was talking and I tried to get him to pop the whole time. And because I didn't, <laughs> I didn't move. I didn't do anything. I just sat there, slunched up, hunched over and to me. And that's just, I, I mean, awkwardness is, that's that's how you get through a lot of things. Is if you can get through awkwardness, I mean, because yeah. the first time you hear your voice is awkward. <laughs> the first time, you know, and yeah. like this is hard for me to do right now because like I I'm the show. This is like um, out of my comfort zone, not talking to somebody. Yeah. But I'm so used to having like <laughs> the guest plan, this plan, that plan, and then and it's just yeah. like uh, it, it, it's it's such a new feeling because I'm not used to just sitting down and. Um, not having any kind of uh, format and because that comes from my regular job because everything has to be organized and formatted and and but in our show that's why me and ap are great because i format things and i just tell them go pull a a vodka and tonic and have at it (laughs) yeah it's um that is the the beautiful thing about podcasting is that like i'm a fan uh, of both styles, like I've I, I listen to plenty of shows that are that are you know oh you can tell this is very organized and I listen to plenty of shows that are uh, more off the cuff like this one or or, or I don't know, like I, I feel like tell them Steve Dave is a pretty good example of like an yeah. off the cuff show uh, it, it's and like that's like 
you know, it's it's funny uh, that like the Smodcast is what brought me into the world of podcasting, and I would still say like at one point that I gave that one up. I gave Smodcast up, and I gave Hollywood Babylon up, and I gave a lot of the the Smodcast up, uh, podcast up, except for Tell Him Steve Dave. It was the one that I didn't like. That to me, I think is. Uh, despite it not being the name brand of, of the Smodcast podcast, like that's their best podcast because it feels like it's the most off the cuff one they have. I, th- I think, um, and it is, I don't know, maybe it's because it's the, it, it's like a, I don't know, I guess you just unique voices. I don't know what it is, but that's one of the ones that were like big for me to like, Hey, let me just lose myself for an hour. Let me lose myself for two hours. Just get out of the real world for a while and, and laugh along with this podcast Um, and, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, I think there's plenty of room in the world for having, I mean, I, I've done organized podcasting and, and I think if you have somewhat of a team, uh, where, where, you know, there's a purpose to it, it works. Cause I've tried taking notes for this show. Um, I had Erin McGathy on, uh, and if you're not familiar with her, she was, um, she's a, she hosts the podcast. This feels terrible. She was married to Dan Harmon for a couple months. Uh, and, um, she was, she's acted in a few things. Um, but like she was one of my huge gets, like, like I have like a, it's her Kevin Smith and, uh, Aisha Tyler. Like they're my three podcasting gets. Like if I can interview them, I'll die a happy man. And, um, I, um, I would say a year, a year and like two months ago is when I sat down and talked to her and, it was the beginning was a very awkward intro because I had notes written down to what I wanted to say. And the same thing happened. I talked to James D'Amato from the one shot podcast network because, uh, no, not him, not him. It was somebody else. I forget who else I talked to. I talked to somebody else and I was like, ah, this is kind of a big deal. Not that James is, if James, if you're listening, you're a total big deal, but I didn't screw anything up. with you. Yes. We feel this way. Both <laughs> it's, of us. We have yes. Uh, <laughs> you are a big deal. I've told you what you mean to me. Uh, but this, I didn't, I, I did the right thing when I interviewed you. I did not take notes. That's actually a compliment to you, James. Uh, I, I think it was Hal Lublin, um, uh, who is a, he's from my area. He's uh, in Pennsylvania, but he, he's a comedian out in LA. Um, and we interviewed him for his podcast because he was coming to the Philadelphia podcast festival here in 2017. And uh, I was like, all right, let me take a couple notes just so like I, I nail the intro. And like the first thing I do is screw up the name of his podcast. Uh, and I'm like, okay, well, this is an edit point. I'm sorry. I normally don't take notes. Uh, this is why I don't take notes. <laughs> and like, so I just, I can't do the organized thing personally. It's, it's just, um, I feel like, I feel like if I had something organized, like th- this pie podcast would end up being uh we're at about an hour and 10 minutes it would have been uh, a 15 minute podcast yeah, and then we're done because i'm yeah. very go, yeah and, go that's, ahead. and that's why because you have two podcasters who know that like if you see a guest not talking you're like okay they're not talking hey and that's one thing uh let's go at but <laughs> one of my kevin smith i i mean from bottom of my heart when they said who would you ultimately guess you want to get i actually said kevin smith when we talked about it before even before it has nothing to do with this show. I, I, I'm being a completely transparent. And then yeah. I, I listen to, I listen to a lot of music, but I listen to, they were based out of uh, New York called Brownback All Stars. There's this guy by the name of Concept who I found like in 2011 and 12, listening to his music. And I noticed he had like an email. So I emailed him, asked him if he would, you know, come on the show. And he was like, yeah, sure. And I was like, are you serious? You know, I didn't say that back, but this is a guy who I listen to music, who I love, who I purchased his, actually purchased it and didn't steal the music. I purchased it and he came on the show and he was by far like, uh, he, and he just texted me today and he was like, Hey, the new video came out just, you know, and he texted me and then like, you know, and it's like, um, but he was somebody that like, I'm a fan fan of, like I, I was, I was marking out like concept is right now on the, on my phone talking to me on my phone and and that's the, yeah. and that's one of the cool things is not is he world famous no but he's growing his brand we're growing ours and we're working together and that's and that's to me is like and there was another experience i had where i was a fan of someone else's podcast and she was sitting next to me in the studio um and i was like holy cow like she's sitting next to me i listened to her yeah. podcast um it was 
It was Chick McGee yeah. off the Bob and Tom show. He had his own okay. podcast, and she was on it, named Jess Hooker, and she was sitting next to me in the studio, and I'm like, holy shit. Like, I'm a fan of hers, <laughs> and now she's doing – and she's done her show like three times. I'm like, oh, my God. And but and then the, the show just took off, and um, now we're having people asking to come on the show, and I'm like – and that's and that's phenomenal. That lets us know we're doing something well. Because in yeah. Indiana right yeah. now, they're having a the big cannabis, medical cannabis movement. And, um, okay. and it's always funny is like, we've had three or four cannabis uh, episodes since we've been on and, and, um, and then I guess we kind of got known as the pro cannabis, which we are for medical marijuana for veterans, not going to get into that either political, but it's just cool. They're like, Hey, we're having a town hall <laughs> meeting. We want to come on and talk on the show. You guys do a hell. I'm like, that's awesome. Sure. Yeah, it is. Um, it's it's nuts the kind of things that happen i think when you start hosting a podcast like it is and it is as simple as like asking a question like just asking someone that you never thought would say yes like i remember sending the email that i sent for aaron mcgathy and saying uh, the next day because i sent it while after having a few beers and and the next day i was like well that was an idiotic email to send because if she says no or doesn't respond like this was someone that I really wanted on the show. I kind of blew my chance. And like within like a week, she responded and said, totally, I'll do it. This, you know, here's, here's uh, the, the guy who's helped me schedule things out now. So like, just talk to him and we'll get it scheduled. And like, I, one of the, one of my favorite things that I did with that episode was that like, I got ready in, in my, uh, in my studio uh, and um, was like probably sitting there for 10 minutes before the the call actually connected. And I hit record right away because I wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything, make sure I didn't screw anything up. Cause it was like the first big interview I ever had, or at least in with this show. And it was like an important get for me. And I kept, I edited it down because there was, there was a lot of silence, but I think I, I think I kept close to like two to three minutes of like me kind of, it was like the, that classic scene in like a, in a teen movie where the, the guy is like talking himself up in the mirror. Uh, and, and like, you can do it, buddy. You got this. You are important. Like, it's basically kind of that, that me talking myself up for this, uh, interview. And it's, you, it's, it's, you hear the nervous Kev, then you hear the intro to the show. And then you hear me intro the show and intro the, and intro Aaron as the guest. And it's like two different people, uh, which I, I was worried that wasn't going to be the case. I was worried that I was going to be a, a babbling idiot when I sat down to chat with her. Uh, luckily, I was only a babbling idiot beforehand. But that's what what I learned from that was like, just ask. Like, there's no harm in asking. And for me, I'll ask multiple times. <laughs> like, I'm sure Kevin Smith has gotten a tweet or two from me at least three times in the last uh, year and a half saying, Hey, you want to do the show? And I'm going to try again because he's coming to Philly soon. So I'm going to try it again to get him on the show. So, so to promote his stuff, but like, yeah, it's, it, I, I learned it doesn't hurt to, to ask. Cause you, you know, the worst they're going to say is no. Uh, the best that's going to happen is they're going to say yes. And then I used to play through. the rejection game in high school. What I used to do is we used to get, we used to drink and then I would call it. This is when you still had a phone book. So everybody calm down. <laughs> and I used to call the hottest chicks their house. Not chicks, the no. prettiest girls. Sorry, I've been around AP too much. He always says chicks. And uh, and I would call them, and I knew I'd get rejected. And and so that's the, that's the same way I look at it with the guests. Like, hey, it's just a rejection game. Like, it's nothing personal. Just keep just keep trying until someone comes on. And nothing's cooler than when you get someone on. And, and I haven't been I haven't yeah. been let down yet. The only the scariest person was the paranormal guy we had in in the house. Like after he left, it, yeah. it it was kind of sketchy. So if you do paranormal <laughs> or if you do, make sure you're prepared because his phone started playing music and his bag was ten feet away from him, and he hadn't touched his bag the whole time. That's nuts. They, they, I um, said it was fed. That's... Everybody kept bust saying, "Oh, you guys planted that," and I said, "No." <laughs> AP came over to my house that night because he was freaked out. That's crazy. That's and and that's like right now I'm in the middle of remodeling my shed to be a, you know a, a bit more proper of a studio just so that it looks nicer so so it doesn't look like I'm just podcasting in a shed so that when I invite people <laughs> over uh, at least like I can say yeah there's bikes hung up in here 
But also, like, look at all the pretty decorations I have to make it. It's hey, own come do home. my podcast. Uh, it's in a shed. shed. Don't mind the rags filled with chloroform. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, it's funny because I, I call it the shedio, and people are always like, "I don't know if you want to have people come over." You'll be on there once, and you'll never be show. on there again because people will make it out of there. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but yeah, I'm in the middle of because that's really the only space we have that I can like claim as my own. So I'm in the process of remodeling that so that I can start bringing guests back into the studio because I have what what I another thing I found out while I was, we were promoting the Philadelphia Podcast Festival uh, on this show was that like a lot of podcasters actually are like within a within the distance or willing to travel the distance to just sit in studio. Cause they'd rather do that than do something remote. Cause they want the face to face, which is like, I'm, I'm now so accustomed to remote podcasting that I can go either way. Uh, but like a lot of podcasters are like, well, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't get the remote podcast. Like, how do we see each other's face? Um, and it's, you know, so I need to get my, that's like my project that I've been working on. Uh, I was supposed to finish it by July 15th and uh, it's still not done. Nah, surprise, and, surprise. And that's, and that's but, one of those things is you have it. And that's, and that's, and that's one thing that can get frustrating when you do have a podcast and you, I mean, you've been doing this a long time and, and hell, it's hard to keep up on listening to your favorite podcast. And it's, it's hard to, mm-hmm. um, when you have a wife and kids and a full-time job and it, it is very hard. And that's one thing that uh, I get discouraged at a time. Cause I was like, I want to be doing more. I want to be doing more, but like, you know, first and foremost is your family and, and, and taking yeah, care of your family. Yeah, totally. And my wife's supportive. AP's wife is supportive. Um, we we're both very blessed with that. And, um, mm-hmm. It, that's but you can get discouraged because you feel like you're not putting everything into it that you want to at that time but I mean it, that can, like you said it comes and goes I mean it really does yeah 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 and and I'm very lucky to be in, at a part like you know I, I, that I can say that well I'm not gonna do anything until about 10 p.m and that'll probably now that school's starting back up my son will be entering kindergarten awesome. for the first time and my fiance is yeah, it, that's uh, it's it's wild to think that that he's uh, that old now. <laughs> like I remember when he was just a little little kernel of a person, uh, and now he's like uh, like he. Uh, in fact, today my fiance is a, a teacher. Uh, she teaches in the city, so we uh, her and I uh, we dropped the, our daughter off to grandma, and then me, uh, my fiance, and my son went down to the school to. Um, to set up the classroom and um i i want to say like he was doing something crazy and she looks at me and like kind of whispers like god he's such an (laughs) asshole and and he turns around and says i'm not an asshole you're an asshole we're like we both turn our heads and we chuckle to ourselves and we say trey you know you don't say that and but like it's it's so weird having this little human being that that's like relatable now like and is like kind of gets like what he's saying like he understands that he shouldn't have said that but he he used it properly <laughs> like it's hard for me to i tell jen i tell, tell her all the time like it's kind of hard for me to discipline the kid when he uses it right like i I mean, I guess I should, but when he uses it right, I just laugh more because it, I can't believe he, he figured it out. And all those things that you're told, <laughs> like from your parents and movies, you're like, you know what? That's all. That's ridiculous. But like when my kid, uh, when my boys do something, I'm just like, oh my god, that's so. Oh wait, I'm not supposed to laugh. <laughs> and, and like when they'll make yeah. fun of something or somebody, and, and and I'm just like, you know, you should be really respectful to people and walk away. But dude, that was a great one. I'm I'm going to remember that. <laughs> yeah it's 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 definitely something that like in the moment you kind of have to be like all right you know that was wrong blah blah blah, blah. and then like five to ten years later you'd be like remember when you did that because that was hilarious i had to put you in your place but it was hilarious oh, uh, no and, and and that's for and that's for sure is my youngest one is well we wanted to go um see cynthia today because we couldn't do the show but still hang out with her and and i was like hey colin just you know be calm or whatever. Don't, you know, don't start asking weird questions. Cause he's the weird question guy. <laughs> and Luke's Luke's 14 and you know, he's real reserved and real calm, which, and it's and but Colin will ask stupid questions and he'll just, and he'll, 
<laughs> and it'll always just start dancing like like um like <laughs> not like dancing like we grew up to it's like trap music dancing i'm like boy i was like what is wrong with you and then he'll always, <laughs> and you try not to laugh because it's funny it but you're always afraid like you know who they're going to do it around i'm waiting for him to and then I, I still remember this story. This Someone brought this story up to me today. They said, hey, do you remember when your son went upstairs and got mad at you? Because he said, Dad, I don't want to be white. I want to be light-skinned. I'm mad and slammed the door. And I'm like, how do you? What, what? I was like, that's kind of funny. But what do you? There's no parenting book for that. <laughs> no, it is. It's, it's so not. And like, even like the, like for me, the thing that like makes me real nervous, especially now that my son's entering school and I don't have to worry about it quite yet, but like I grew up as the kid that got bullied and like, not like bully bully. Like I wasn't like physically beat up or anything, but like I had eczema as a kid. So like I got made fun of for that. And like, I was a, I'm a super emotional person. And so like I was again, like as a kid, I, I don't, I guess never diagnosed with depression, but and I, again, I don't think I was, I don't think I, I hate saying that I have it or I, I had it because I know that I've never needed medication for it. So like, I know I'm not that bad off. Like there's people that are way worse, way more. And I, I don't know. If, I don't, don't mean to be uh, negative. If I say worse, but there are people that are affected by depression way more than I am. Uh, and uh, so I hate saying that, that, that that's what it was, but I was an emotional kid. And like, I can just imagine like what that, what that's like now in the 21st century uh, with like all this technology and social media where bullies can hide behind it and, and whatnot. And it's like, Oh my God. And my kid's emotional. Like me, I'm like, I don't know. Like, like there is no handbook on like, well, this is how you solve your kids. uh, You know, depression basically. Like, I don't, I don't know what to do. Like, it's going to be a scary moment. That's a great point because you could be like, Hey, you could put it like, let's, let's say today was my son's birthday. Not being the point, but, he could have posted a picture of his gift and they could say like, well, what would it take your parents six months to buy that? And you'd just be like, what? Mm-hmm. Like that's, I mean, and, and I'd be like, who is that Luke? But I'm like, we're going to drive their house. We're going to punch his dad in the face. Like that's the old school way. Like, I want to go do something about this. And instead, instead it's like, no, it's yeah. okay. You just, just let it go. I'm like, no, don't yeah. let it go. And my name, I obviously I go by BJ and like it was, it was, and I stuck with that name because I didn't have a name at birth for two weeks. And so the nurses oh. named me. And so it was either make fun of or be made fun of. And that's how I grew up. And that's yeah. where I was like, I mean, because how many different yeah. and uh, how many different ways, even at 37 now, if someone makes fun of my name. I mean, and I, my new thing is do the slow clap. Like, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> did your wife call that one in? I mean, how did you get that one? That's so creative. <laughs> And, uh, and that's where the name Smugcast come from was actually from um, work, my work, because they said I could be smug and condescending. And I was like, that's a great name, Smugcast. And, uh, and, uh, and, and so it was just, and that's how the name came about. But in, in with the name, and because um, we always were like, well, do you want to go by your name? And I'm like, well, my Twitter's at the BJ Robin, so my, name, my name's already out there, so. That's why I stuck with it, yeah. and I always yeah. get it all the time. Like, is that your real name? I'm like, yes. And they'll and they'll always say, well, <laughs> well, what's your name? I'm like, well, it's BJ. They're like, no, it's not. I'm like, actually, my grandma gave that to me who passed away. Why are you making fun of my name? Which is not true, <laughs> but just to destroy them. Like, why? Why is it so important for you to know yeah. my name? Yeah. Like, like, yeah. and that's and yeah. that's in and, and that's where kind of like the society thing is, is like, well, I need to know everything about you. No, no, you don't. I'm, we can know a little bit, but you don't have to know everything. Yeah. Yeah. It was for me, a weird decision. Cause I, for, for I, when I was wrestling, I would wrestle, I wrestled under the name steel tip. And you know, it's funny cause uh, like in hindsight, it's like, why, like, why was that a name? Why like, how was that a good name to wrestle under and whatnot? But like, I, I used that name throughout like the first six to seven years of my podcasting. Uh, And then finally, when I started doing this show, I was like, well, I'm going to, I'll just put it out there that my name's Kev. Like I'm Kev now. Like, you know, it's, it's almost like I, uh, and I, I guess I get this because I'm such a Kevin Smith fan that like, I'm, I don't build my, I don't build the everything is awesome brand. I don't really build any of the brand, the band, the like, 
when I promote everything, I promote everything through my own personal Twitter. Like I, I most, I'm like, I, I'm acting like I'm Kevin Smith by by promoting me as a brand versus what I do, which makes no sense because I'm a nobody. But like that's just I don't know, like a weird like. Um, uh, I guess thing that I just picked up from being a, an uber fan of Kevin Smith for the last I don't know forever, uh, and it's um, it's again just kind of why I am not a great marketer because <laughs> I'm marketing me as Kev versus uh this podcast as everything but, is awesome. But I and no, I see what you're saying is, and that's and that's the hard part about it is because you want to promote it. You want yeah. like, you want to say, look what I've done. I hope you enjoy it. But other part, other part of me is like, uh, you know, you just like, I just, I'm BJ. Like, yeah, I hope, <laughs> I hope I make you laugh. I want to make you feel awkward. Cause I want to tell dead grandma jokes, but I mean, that's just how, you know, that's how the show goes sometimes. <laughs> and, but, and yeah, I think if there's one thing that if I could do have anything in the world, I'd be like, have some like, and a, like I said, AP is great at it. I mean, he is. And I think that's why I'm blessed by it. Cause I think I would struggle. I think I would struggle at it because I, I would know like, like how, I mean, cause there's classes you can actually take. And I think AP told me when they had their, uh, when they were doing videos, music videos and stuff, that, like they took a class on marketing through social media. And I'm like, they have classes on social, and I know that they would. We know that they would. You know, they're gonna probably be like thirteen yeah, yeah. books out there and a YouTube channel and stuff, and 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 that was the and that was the hard hard part was and it went through it and it's just because sometimes like we were and I'm not gonna be negative, but like you know like there's a lot of hashtags you put with like well if you put this hashtag we'll retweet it and um, through certain um, podcasts or I don't know how to say without saying who it is. But I was yeah. just like, we all know. And I was what like, you what's mean? the point of this? It does nothing for us. But, but, yeah. But by doing that, though, I was able to, you know, uh, respond to you, come on here, and then we were able to meet um, who's Juice in the AM, be able to meet him and find out, you know. So there was some good out of it, but we thought it was going to lead to your fans are going to see it, our fans are going to see you, and then, you know. And I was like, yeah. brother, it just doesn't work that way. Yeah, it is something because that's like um, as much as I enjoyed like the like f- like finding groups on Facebook and whatnot that are super supportive of podcasting, like the the pattern. Uh, I'll, I'm going to call it out, but the pot, and maybe this is no, what you're talking no, about because there's no, more than no, one. You, I know there's other ones. <laughs> but but like for me, it's uh, like pattern family was like well, I don't really get it. Like I use it every now and then, but like I also am not a big like I I, I try to retweet when I can because. You know, it's what you're supposed to do. But for me, it, it, it has been like more so a source to make more network connections versus like actually having my podcast downloaded more. Like it's it's definitely not a source to gain more listeners because uh, that if it was, I would my, my I feel like my server well, would crash is, by now. And they bully you uh, like if you don't we retweet, you're not doing the process. I'm like, why, why are you why are you yelling at me for? Like I'm sorry. Like my thumb hurts. Yeah. I tried to retweet, but my my phone just blew up. Yeah, and like it's I I've to the point, and I, I'm sure like that's probably why I don't think I get retweeted <laughs> as much as I do, I uh, as, as much as I used to, uh, <laughs> because I I not that I stopped retweeting, but I definitely uh, don't do it as much as I should, if ever. I mean, I would say that like uh, maybe if I use the hashtag pattern family every week. I probably one week will be like, Oh yeah, I should probably retweet a bunch of people and that's it. And like, listen, um, I get the, I get the movement and it works. I, I, for me, this is what I, I enjoy getting out of is being able to talk to somebody else or be making another network connection. Um, because I mean, that's how I've had a couple guests on is just through the fact that I use the hashtag pattern family. We followed each other on Twitter and, and you know, I was able to get a guest out of it. And like, that's always the most important thing for me is like being able to get content. I don't, Everything else doesn't matter to me. I mean, it should. It probably should matter to me more than it does. Um, but at this point, in, in it's kind of like I'm going the reverse direction of what a normal podcaster does, where like, you start out saying, well, I'm just going to do it for fun, and then you try to figure out how to make money at it. I went the opposite way. I was like, well, let me try to figure out how to make money at it, and then now I'm just like, yeah, it's for me. That's all. Yeah, and, then one, and, and our thing is we're trying to create a 
like the whole the whole brand and like you know we're one of the biggest yeah. podcasts and um in the area and everything like that and it all happened organically which that's what i'm most proud of if it happens organically instead of attaching yeah. yourself to somebody yeah. like hey you're somebody important i will sit here and ask you questions i have no problem with that either but it are you in it for the right thing i guess and that's the only time i ever get negative mm-hmm. is like when they're like wow you know we get four thousand and, and it's one of my favorite shows, but they're like, well, we had 4 million downloads last week. And I'm like, yeah, but it's like, it's because you have, it's who you're with. And like your audio, your audio yeah, sucks yeah. and it keeps dropping out. I'm like, you know, and like that, I think that's the only thing I ever get upset about is that is when they're throwing out their downloads and saying it. And it's not because of their content. Yeah, it's yeah. because of they hitched their wagon to somebody. So I'm proud of what we've done yeah. organically. We did a grassroots, started from the bottom up, and and I'm more proud of that because we started almost a small business and, and it's growing. Yeah, no, and that's it's kind of like uh, I don't I I don't fully recognize that aspect of it because it is like when I stopped caring is when um like like good things started happening with this show. And, um, and I kind of, kind of stick with that mentality because I don't want those good things to go away. Like I, I enjoy the fact that we grew our fan base, uh, literally, uh, you know, after taking a couple of years off, I grew up from nothing again. And, um, and, uh, I try, I just try not to dwell on all that because like, uh, just, I had bad luck when I used to, and then when we, it, so, and then, and you know, when we, um, when AP and I just started being ourselves and just, and, and like pushed all that other stuff. <laughs> That's the only thing that ever bothers me is that yeah. one right there. But other than that, and then the show just took off because we just sit in there and did what we wanted to do, how we wanted to do it. And we quit worrying about how everybody else, we were worried about how ever we just, just pushed through it. And then it's just, and then that's like, even right now, like right here, this is a great show to be on because and I'm just saying that the mark the because you can just be yourself. You don't have to worry about like, how should I be yeah. or, or anything like that? Hmm. Yeah, and that's like I'm. I actually like this week. I think I mentioned like I accidentally booked myself. Like I booked two interviews. I booked myself as a guest on two other shows this week, and I'm like, and like those like I don't even know. I've like I, I don't know how what they're looking for guest wise because like I'm not that funny. Like I'm not a comedian. <laughs> like I'm a. Uh, I sit around and talk a lot, so I don't know what what, what exactly you're looking for. Uh, what you know, as as me, be, I'm gonna sit there and I'm gonna try to be funny. I'll answer questions, uh, but I don't know what's gonna happen. If you, uh, I mean, if it's if it's telecast and you might dance for him, but you never know. But they might not trans, you know, transfer yeah. the, uh, audio real well. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, it's uh, it's at that time of the show where uh, I'm staring out the window to the uh, thunderstorm happening outside, and my lights flickered, uh, and I'm almost worried that I'm going to lose power and lose oh, internet. Yeah. So before that happens, um, uh, let's let's uh, get to you and any plugs that you want to throw out there so uh, people can find you. Uh, on your obviously, smugcast dot com. You can go. You can go to smugcast.com. We have all the episodes up there. It's it's on iTunes. It's S M U G C A S T is the name. Um, my Twitter's at the uh, B J Robbins on Twitter. Um, we're on Instagram, um, and then we also it's, it's smugcast also on our Twitter handle is. See, this is what AP is so much better at than me. I, I'm not lying. <laughs> it's at smugcast show. Um, so. And okay. like I said, was uh, I appreciate having him on. This has actually been really refreshing, real calming. I know that sounds weird. Nice. No, I get it. It's it's um, as a fellow podcaster and having been uh, you know discussions with mainly podcasters. That's usually the reaction I get, especially if they're a podcaster. That's you know that that's the producer, the the host, the the everything. They're the ones that that put time and energy into it. Like they're the ones that are like, man, this is a cake in the, uh, you know, this is just cake. I get to sit around and do nothing. I know. Uh, and that's like I finally. I finally get to experience that tomorrow night when I'm a guest on uh, 
Uh, well, you know, it doesn't matter what I'm a guest on because I'm sure this is going to air after that. <laughs> Trivia Geeks. Trivia Geeks is what I'm a guest on. So I get to play a game show. Uh, and you probably can hear that already now uh, on, I'll insert notes uh, where you can find that, I guess. But um, yeah, you know, BJ, thanks for doing the show. Uh, it was um, w- one of those nice little finds where I just go on a little rant and, uh, and I was able to book. It was an easy booking, and and I think a new record of. I don't think I asked one no, single I mean, question. That's, I mean, that's why we're chatty Cathy's. We don't need questions. <laughs> yes, and I definitely. Uh, I feel like, uh, and I say this a lot to my to to my guests, but. Uh, and that's only because I, I, I always mean it because it's always a good conversation. We'll have to have you on the show again one day because I feel like where we talked for a good amount of time, I don't know if we actually accomplished anything. And I would love to talk more uh, about those wrestling podcasts that we, that, that we danced around and uh, just uh, Kevin Smith. I know we could probably go on a, we could probably go on an hour uh, alone oh, on some of those movies. So yeah, any, any, anytime yeah, you just let me on, to- I'm, I can send my kids always, this this time is my peak time, actually. Perfect, perfect. Uh, all right. With that being said, make sure you go check out BJ and the Smugcast on all the places that he told you to. It will also be in our show notes if you didn't listen, uh, and if you didn't listen, shame on you. But you will have it in the show notes for easy clicking access you can find this show on twitter at real awesome pod on uh twitter and on facebook i believe is the same url uh you can find me on twitter where i do most of my tweeting and twatting uh at that nerdy kev and uh, you can find this show on the core temp arts podcast network on core and of course on awesome podcast.com for everything is awesome have a, no, have a week is God damn it. I don't, I had Smodcast on my mind and I, I stole his, his tagline. Uh, okay. This will be the first time I have to edit in like at least six months. <laughs> For everything is awesome. I'm Kev and you can find us on awesomepodcast.com. We've been awesome. Thank you for listening to the Court and Parts Podcast Network. To listen to more Court and Parts shows, visit courtemparts.com.